Hey everybody, you have made it to the last video in the Robot C growth chart. Uh, I am very impressed with your stamina that you've put up with me this long. Uh, this is a little advanced, so we're going to go through uh, basically some stuff on Robot C. There's nothing really to build. You'll notice I still have my line tracker and potentiometer. I have a motor hooked up, and then I have an LED still plugged in down here. Uh, here's what we're going to do we're going to write a code so that if I ever turn this past a certain value, it'll run whatever I want. I could do more than one command at a time with it. And then if I turn it back the other way, it could do a totally different command if I wanted it to. This is called an if-else program. All right, so let's get into robot C here. Uh, you kind of know how this goes by now. So we'll go through the beginnings quickly. I have a new file. I double check my settings. Robot down to platform type, those look good. Communication mode. That's right. And I go over to view. I go all the way down to preferences. No auto file saves. I'm good. And I got to tell it all the stuff I got plugged in. Okay. So that was motors and sensors set up. I click the motors tab. So port two, we have the infamous right motor. You can use a drop down menu. That is a 393 motor. Okay. We're good. And click apply. I'm going to go over to my analog sensors. And I have a potentiometer in IN2. So try to spell it best we can. Potentiometer. It's right there. I'm going to click apply. And the last thing I'm going to do is go over to digital sensors. And way down here, number 12, I have an LED. It is red. So I'm going to type in RED for red LED. And then my drop down menu, I'm going to tell it I have an LED plugged in there. I'm going to click apply and then okay. These are all the parts we need. We have a potentiometer, uh, LED light, and a motor. Okay. I'm going to start this by doing it as an open loop program. So it always does the same thing over and over. That means on line seven, I'm going to type in the word while. Then in parentheses, one equals equals one, end parentheses. I'm going to press the enter button and do another left curly bracket, which is shift and the button just to the right of the P. And then I'm going to go to the end of my program, line 11. I'm going to do a right curly bracket. Okay. So I have my while and then two brackets in the middle and then a bracket at the end. I always have to add curly brackets and sets in my program. Okay. Now, instead of natural language, this one we said is different. We're going to go up to a control structure. I'm going to click the plus, And we said it's called an if else statement. So I'm going to click the plus in front of if. And it's a very bottom one here. If a condition is met, it will run the body of one program. Else, so if that condition is not met, it will run the body of a different program. I'm going to click and drag this over to line 9. Okay, there we go. Now, my condition is I want to turn the potentiometer past a certain number, a certain value. So my condition here, I'm going to double click the word condition. And in these parentheses, I'm going to type in sensor value. Okay, S-E-N-S-O-R capital V-A-L-U-E. And then just a left brace. It's like the blocky one. That is just to the right of the letter P. I'm going to put a left brace in. And what sensor am I going to use? The potentiometer. Potentiometer. I'm going to end that brace. And then what do I want it to read? And I'm going to put a greater than. You could do a greater than or less than or even an equal. If I had to have it equal to one certain number to work. I mean, I don't know why you'd want that, but you could. I'm going to say greater than, and I'm going to pick a number, 2,500, okay? This means if the sensor value, whatever value that potentiometer reads, if it's greater than 2,500, it's going to run this part of the program right here. Else means if this is not true, it's going to run this part of the program, okay? Now, what do I want to have happen? I want to say when I turn this past 2500, the motor starts and the light is off. 
And if it is not greater than 2500, I want the motor to stop and the light to go on. Okay, so I can control a couple different things at once. So that's the first body of the program. Now I go down to the regular natural language command. Movement is going to be my start motor. That's going to be up here. Okay, start motor, and then I can backspace and get rid of the word body. Start motor. Down here would be stop motor. Well, I might as well just do that now too. Okay, else if it doesn't meet that command, it's gonna be stop motor. I have to get rid of this word body. And then down under else, I wanted to turn the light on. And if you remember from way back when, all the LEDs are under the word special. So I'd say turn LED on down here. And that means I have to turn it off at the top. So turn LED off, we'll go in this program, okay? So these are like two little mini programs, think of it that way. And now I have to use my keyboard to specify all the stuff between the parentheses. Start motor, motor port is port two. Speed, uh, we're gonna max it out, man, go 127. LED, uh, we called it red. You could type in either DGTL12 or red. I like red. And then down here, we're going to do the same thing. Stop motor, um, port two, and turn LED on, red, okay? Uh, sometimes when you get all these brackets and all this typing, you do make mistakes. So click compile. I got lucky down here. There's nothing in this frame, so there's no errors. It should work. Um, no guarantees, but let's see kind of what happens. All right, uh, orange cord. I still have it, it's plugged into my Cortex and my computer. My Cortex is off, so I turn that on. And let's kind of see what happens, all right? Let's see if I can get back here, bring this window over so we can kind of see both at once. I'm gonna download. Before I press start, I'm gonna check my sensor setting down here in the bottom. Let's see where I'm at. Let's try this again. So right now my potentiometer is reading 2300. It's greater than 2500. My motor is going to start. So I'm going to turn that back a little bit just to make sure I don't bump it accidentally. Let's press start. Okay. You'll notice that the green line is kind of flipping around back there. Since it's a loop, it keeps going through the whole thing. Uh, right now the light should be on. I don't know if you can see that very well, but it does look like it's pretty bright. If I turn the potentiometer, motor started, you can probably hear it if you can't see it. My light is off. If I turn this back, it does the opposite. Now the light's on, motor's off. Okay. You could be the best DJ, get a good beat going. You've got your own light show. Okay. Uh, there you go. So this is a little more advanced. This is an if-else command. Uh, it will come in handy uh, later on. So make sure you save this as if-else command. All right. Happy coding. Good luck.